Ingrid Kalam has been an artist that I've been watching for a very long time, since I worked at the Whitney in New York and spent a lot of time thinking about contemporary artists whose work was compelling, but also whose process was equally compelling. The museum last year inaugurated a new series called In Process, which focuses on emerging or mid-career artists who are all engaged in new endeavors at the time of the exhibition. Last year when we launched the series, uh, Ingrid was truly in the thick of the body of work that surrounds us here in the gallery. She had just returned from a residency at the Albright Knox Art Gallery in Buffalo, New York. This is the first sort of finished museum uh, installation that's, that's based on this new process. So it was a combination of, as you can see, a number of drawings and paintings that were made uh, all as a result of this residency. And this wall drawing as well is also part of that part of that project. So given the fact that this wall drawing is certainly the most ambitious installation the museum's ever approached, um, we approached it delicately, uh, diplomatically, cautiously, and also by being very inventive, I think, as a staff. Um, the project it was one that brought with it several concerns in terms of the museum's facility, one of which was that the pigment that was actually pounced to make this drawing is airborne, it's particulate, and it's very, very fine. So the gallery had to be prepared for the possibility that the pigment would spread beyond the confines of this space. So we actually created a Tyvek wall, uh, which made this area where the experiment was taking place a bit like a bubble. Everything was encased in there, and individuals who were working on the project had to be clothed in special suits and had to protect their faces, their hair, all of their limbs, just to make sure that um, the pigment, which in and of itself is not dangerous, just didn't infiltrate everything. Um, so that was one series of preparations. We had to consider how to adjust our HVAC system for the duration of the installation so that if the particles did spread, it didn't, they didn't filter into other galleries, other areas of the museum. So we did that as well. Um, and the last stage of the process, which involved the application of a varnish to the surface of the drawing, um, the varnish itself is a toxic substance, and so we had to create a series of ducts that would allow for fresh air to come into this bubble and for the air that was now um, invaded with this toxic substance to leave the gallery without, again, spreading to other parts of the museum. So those were the kind of logistical hurdles that we worked out in this process and, and with great results, I'm happy to say. So it was a great project also as a team building exercise in many ways uh, for everyone here. All the work in this exhibition uh, are based on tracings that I did in Buffalo, New York. Um, this is from the Perry Street Project's waiting pool, which is a gigantic waiting pool. This is probably one eighth of it. Um, so you can imagine it was an um, a unused waiting pool that was the paint was chipping off of. And I was interested in the, this area had a crack that I think started in the center and radiated out, but it was patched and the paint was peeling up off of the patches. So I traced it with um, about nine assistants over the course of a week. I drew and directed what we made here. The tracing is on Architects Drafting Mylar, which the drawings in the exhibition are also on the Architects Drafting Mylar, which is trans, uh, translucent and transparent. You, um, we trace with a number two pencil and um, trace exactly what is on the ground. Then I bring it back, brought it back to my studio, traced, um, you know, cleaned it off, and to make this piece, we traced it again on butcher paper to transfer to the wall. I traced it and drew it with an electric stylus, which burned little holes in it so that um, Norm, Vern, and Micah could pounce it with, the, with pigment, and it transfers the drawing to the wall. And then I came and I touched up um, the, the overall thing in the beginning of the week. All of the work in the exhibition are based on tracings such as this. All the drawings and paintings have layerings of the tracings from the different sites. The different sites were the Perry Street Project's waiting pool, the ArcelorMittal Steel shipping building, uh, and the tarred over cracks 
in the Albright Knox parking lot. Almost everything on the ground is kind of ignored, <laughs> so, so it's kind of a lost place. And um, I like recuperating them and bringing them into taking what's on the ground and putting it on the wall. The process of making the drawings is um, when I take the tracings from Buffalo, we brought them to the studio, cleaned them for several months, and re-pieced them together. And then um, I make a constellation of all of the tracings on the floor of my studio in different combinations and not necessarily in the, uh, from the same site. So I put together, in this drawing, there are tracings from the steel mill, the parking lot, and the waiting pool. And the, you, you can see the, the parking lot, the tart over cracks, maybe this orange and this purple. The Arcelor Middle Steel are the numbers. The, so there's a 200 in a turquoise that goes across and a 201 in, that's reversed because the mylar is transparent and um, in the royal blue. And then the, the green would be the, the waiting pool. And there, the drawing is all on one layer of mylar of all of the levels of the constellation that I make on the floor. It's, I think of it as an x-ray. So it's, it's, it's seeing through all of the layers. It's kind of like each traced area is its own painting. And then I proceed to the next painted area and make decisions in that area, and I don't go back to the area or I already painted. So this, this vermilion field is, has gold and magenta happening within it, and I might have changed where the gold and magenta are when I was painting it, but then once I move on to the, um, this, this light blue area, I don't change the, uh, I don't go back and change the vermilion. And you can see the relationship between the painting and the drawing in um, the numbers, as, as I decide what is visible, it's kind of mathematical. So it's a process of elimination. So it's kind of like, if that's, the drawing is the x-ray, the painting is, are my hands going over each other and you don't see what, what is on top, no, what is below, what is on top. Mm -hmm. And it's, pa it's painted like a puzzle. I spend most of my time thinking about color, actually, in my day of painting. And it's, um, the colors come from memory or sensation or whatever happened in my day or, um, you know, responding to the field that I did before. This painting is called Arcelor Middle Steel Shipping Building 1, number 233. And um, the way that I paint it is with a very soft brush that you can see the marks um, pulled across. The, the soft brush is basically a sign painting brush, which you would use to pinstripe a car so that you don't get a, the take up of the brush. And so they're continuous marks, and I unify the different fields with those marks. So the red is three different reds. I can't even see the, all three reds. But, and then the, the yellow is, um, f flows in the same way. The, the, the gray and the green are one shape, which is actually the wading pool, um, a mark from the wading pool. And it undulates between gray and green, as the gray passes over the, the yellow, it makes it uh, a green. And it's kind of uh, a shift in my work historically that, that I'm using um, modulation in the color to, to evoke something else. My favorite way to look at the paintings in my studio is across, across them, actually, as, a, as the light rakes across it because you can see all the brush marks. My work walks a line between abstraction and representation. The, the work is actually very representational. It's not photographic. It's not based on looking at how light hits a face or, or how a photograph depicts reality. Because it's based on tracing, it's actually uh, more accurate than a photograph in the information that it documents. And it looks abstract in, in at first glance, particularly certain pieces, but, um, but it's actually a different form of representation.
My work is based on a lot of um, collecting information. The tracing is all very accurate information. And then I have uh, several systems that I work with to come up with the final works of art, the, the drawing, the wall drawing, the paintings. I'm interested in what people see in it, not necessarily knowing all of my systems. My systems create the specifics of how the work looks. Most people aren't going to know them and whatever they get from looking at them is interesting to me.